Dan catchphrase Ives continues to deliver the goods. This time, Tesla is going through a code red situation right now. Uh, to report first quarter of deliveries next week. Joining us uh, now on why he's lowering his price target on the stock ahead of those numbers uh, is Dan Ives, Wedbush Securities uh, managing partner. I don't know. It just makes me smile a little bit, Dan. Um, you could be lowering your numbers because the stock's at 175 and your, your target's 315. That would be one. That'd be a good reason. We'll get all your other reasons, but that that that's a good start, I think. Uh, but it's <laughs> is Joe trolling Dan, suggesting that Dan just chases Tesla stock with his price targets. Oh, I think Dan has recently changed his tune from chasing to drawing a line in the sand, and I've been giving him credit recently for holding fairly firm with his price target, seeming to understand the AI opportunity, autonomy, and a lot of things that other folks on Wall Street are ignoring. Strange opening from Joe there. It's a little bit odd. You're, you're going down $15 to 300 and you're keeping an outperform rating. All this sounds sort of, I don't know, too little too late. Yeah, well, I mean, it's obviously a great point. We're bullish for Tesla on the other side. Well, you must be because you, you still have a $300 yeah, price target. Yeah, what, what, what's that return from 180 to, to 300 is, so you're still looking for like a 70% return, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and look, we've been here before. In other words, like re, there's no doubt, and we call it out, I mean, this is a code red situation for Tesla. I mean, they are going through some dark days in China from a demand perspective. But, but Joe, I believe on the other side of this, this is a company, not just from an FSD perspective, but from volume that could start to get two and a half, three million vehicles per year as we go into next few years. Our whole point here is you're in between two growth waves here. They clearly need to lay out a strategy for investors because this is going to be a ripped a bandaid off delivery quarter next week. And, and there's no smoke and mirror about it. And, you know, I think right now for Musk, I kind of view it as a fork in the road period to hand old investors through this. You are pretty blunt. First quarter deliveries for Tesla, and we'll find out next week, but you expect it to be a nightmare quarter because of China and mm -hmm. China demand. Yeah, I mean, China, we, we originally had that up 3 4%. It's going to be down 3 to 4%. And, and, the issue swing, here, yeah. and the issue here is just that, that Game of Thrones price war that's happened in China with EVs, it's, it's hurt Tesla. And I think right now the problem is do they continue to cut prices or, the, or do they ultimately hold serve and focus on where demand could be? And I think... Uh, spoiler alert, Tesla will continue to cut prices as necessary to keep selling through volume. Not only is this in line with Tesla's mission statement, but Musk is also on the record saying that if necessary, they'd sell vehicles for literally no profit at all. And why would you do that? Other than the fact that it's in line with your mission, um, the answer would be autonomy which funnily enough seems to comprise a huge portion of Dan's $300 price target on Tesla stock, close to a doubling from here. A huge moment earlier this week when Tesla received a message from the boss, Musk, saying, listen, bitches, every new customer taking delivery of a Tesla vehicle, you guys now need to give them a quick trip around the block, so to speak, showing what FSD V12 can do. And all US Tesla owners, new and existing, get a one-month free trial of FSD. A lot of people still think of Tesla as a car business, just a car business. But we're watching them transform into a hardware and more importantly, services business. People will be subscribing to FSD, 200 US dollars per month, a recurring revenue stream, extremely high profit margins. This is another key reason why Tesla will continue to sell through vehicles at whatever the market clearing price. Now it's true they are between growth waves, next gen vehicle soon, current generation vehicles now. There's no magic instantly start producing high volumes of future vehicle models button, unfortunately. So it's inevitable Next 12 or so months, we're not going to see any real meaningful growth in Tesla vehicle volumes because they're not ramping production of any new vehicles. And they're close to maxed out their existing capacity at existing facilities. To add new capacity requires the construction of new lines. It doesn't happen overnight. So we all know this is coming. To Dan's point, on the other side of this, I mean, hello, Tesla stock, the market cap of the company right now is not that far off Toyota. People are panicking. Sentiment is down. This is a gift from the investing gods, in my opinion. Now, to be clear, Tesla will price their vehicles at whatever they need to to keep selling all the vehicles they're producing. They've told us this, so hopefully Dan knows this. As much as we talk about FSD and why we're long-term bullish, and I do believe we're sitting here a year, year and a half from now at a trillion dollar plus mark cap. Yeah, so when we were up at 300 or 299, wherever it was, 
I, I get at that point, were you still worried about supply and, and you didn't see the demand issues coming? Yeah, I think where we were dead wrong is underestimating just how bad China demand was going to be. China demand. So, so for us, when I look back, that's really what's caught us, I think, many by surprise in terms of just how quickly demands come off. But also, with no adult in the room and with two disaster conference calls in a row, they haven't laid out guidance. They haven't given the strategy. You've had other noise in terms of the AI issues with Musk and, and obviously the Delaware comp issue, which is added to it. But I think that that's the problem. They haven't laid out the strategy to where investors right now feel like they're blindfolded playing darts. I think what Dan is suggesting is that Tesla has not spoon-fed analysts numbers to put in their spreadsheets. Instead, analysts are supposed to do the thinking and the work themselves. Do you, you have a price target in terms of 300, but do you think we're near a low here? depending oh. on what happens last, next week? I mean, I think right now a it's lot of the bad news is... Ba- I mean, we wouldn't be bullish if I didn't think that this stock is... is Why not put a buy on it then? Instead that these are highest rating. Outperforms our, it, it, your highest rating? Outperform okay. it's on our top picks list. And I just view it as we've been through these white knuckle periods before over the years. This is... In- so Dan's right about these, quote, white knuckle periods over the years. And just interesting on screen now, the huge spread between different price targets. Dan Ives, 300 bucks a share, which is after cutting a few dollars. You got Shitty Bank, $196 per share. Bernstein, 120. Final price target here on screen, 150. Dan's target is almost three times that of Bernstein. It's so unusual to see such a wide variety of expectations in terms of fair value for any company, let alone one so large. Usually, an analyst that's like 30% above where a stock's at is an outrageous bull. Most analysts seem to really cluster around roughly the same spot. Now, clearly not everyone here is going to be right. The question is, will Dan, will 12 plus months from now, will we be looking back on, holy shit, that really was the deal of the century. Only time will tell. Another one now that we're hitting and we're just calling it out, give out the strategy to what Musk needs to do in the conference call to get through some dark days. He doesn't ahead. really listen though to, to, you know, we've seen when you ask him about how do you feel about criticism, you know, he, he doesn't. Mm. he's going to do what he thinks is right. Joe does have a point here. Elon gives zero fucks what the analysts at Wall Street want him to do. And if I'm being honest, I would prefer Musk to do the polar opposite of what they want. If they believe that Musk doing certain things will help Tesla stock, I'd rather he do certain things that don't help Tesla stock because I'm still buying and the cheaper I buy, the better. I'm not judged on my quarterly performance. Ideally, I'd like to be judged over multiple decades. Between you and I, I'm Pretty confident that Musk is focused on Tesla, their company, the execution, and gives approximately 0.0 fucks about the stock price or what analysts want him to do and or fund managers want him to do. At the end of the day, it is execution that matters and only execution that matters. And he's in a position to be able to do that. No doubt. But I do will, think- he get, will he, you said no adults in the room, you think he'll return to... To, to giving the street what it wants in these calls? Well, I think ever since they lost their CFO since August, there have been basically Nightmare and Elm Street conference calls. This, I believe, is a wake-up call from a demand perspective. And look, if they don't lay this out in terms of the strategy and turn this around, then you could not just have some darker days, but I believe a lot of investors will start to lose faith in where the Tesla story is going, even though we're in between two growth waves. And that's our whole point is that this is a nightmare in the near term. There's massive growth on the other side. You need to handhold investors through it. No different than we've seen Jensen Cook. Hold up a sec. Why would Tesla, why would Elon need to hold investors' hands? I think Dan's got this all wrong. If there's investors out there that haven't built their own valuation model, that aren't making their own estimates, that aren't trying to analyze the company over the next few years, the next five, 10 plus years, if there's investors who don't have the emotional fortitude and or intelligence, if they capitulate, they panic, they worry, they sell near the bottom, that's their fucking problem. This is like a warning label on a hammer that says, do not hit yourself in the head with this thing. I mean, hello, is it really necessary? No. Some people just aren't cut out for investing. That's on them. It's not the job of a company to hold investors' hands. If you can't handle the ups and downs, get the fuck out of the kitchen. This is bizarre. It's, I would much rather the company be focused on actually executing than holding the hands of investors. The more weak hands that get shaken out, the better, in my opinion. The greater the mismatch and the disparity between perception and reality around Tesla and the stock, the better I'm still buying. 
Tessa is not your emotional therapist. It's not their job to hold your hand. Weird. And I hope you guys are very clear. I'm absolutely serious here. In fact, I would prefer Tesla to do the opposite of hand-holding and encourage investors who don't have their emotional shit together, who panic, to get the fuck out of the stock. If they can't handle it, if they have an emotional breakdown, you're probably not cut out for owning Tesla stock. It has a history of extreme volatility, of being massively misunderstood. The ups and downs are par for the course. If you want a less bumpy ride, Tesla's probably not for you. That's what I would prefer, Tesla management to be pointing out. I mean, Tesla's been very fucking clear. They talk about autonomy, the implications, the humanoid robot. They're telling everybody what they're executing on. They're completely transparent and open. And from Dan Ives, who, despite his $300 price target, really wishes that Tesla and Elon in particular would say, there, there, honey, it's okay, come here, daddy's here, everything's fine, you're safe here, everything's fine, don't worry, hey, daddy's here, it's okay, to a Tesla bull versus bear debate. You guys might recognize these folks, Tom, who, I don't know, about six months ago added Tesla FSD licensing to his valuation model. Which, I mean, better late than never. He was a few years late to the party relative to my valuation model, which has had that in there since day one when I first published it in 2021. Link in description. Join Patreon at the best level and above if you want to see it. Not the original version, but the latest. And Craig Irwin, who I'm not sure if he really believes what he says. In fact, I'm sure he doesn't believe what he really says. Claims that he's very bullish on Tesla, the company, yet hates the stock. And then continues to say such absurd things that force me to be unable to take the guy seriously. Such as... Tesla doesn't have anything that Toyota doesn't already have. Just absurd. I mean, you can't take the guy seriously when he says stuff like this. Now, the reason, of course. I mean, Toyota themselves admitted the better part of a year ago, their engineers tore down a Model Y and basically jizzed everywhere. Holy shit, this is incredible engineering. It's a work of art in their own words. Now, why would Toyota engineers, working for a company that already has everything that Tesla has, tear down a Tesla vehicle and then bust nuts all over the place and say it's a work of art? Good question. So hopefully Craig has some new material, because if he says that again, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. The point here, though, I, I just, I don't understand, Craig. I honestly don't think he believes what he says, because what he says is just absurd. It's like a flat earther arguing the earth's flat. I mean, the only reason you do that is because you just want attention. You want to feel significant. And that's the best option that you've got. So I'm not sure what Craig's deal is, but just want that caveat out there. I'm not sure how seriously we can take this bull versus bear debate. I think it is more of a bull versus clown slash method actor debate. I want to start off, we got to start off with the bear case, I think. Uh, Craig. You're one of the most bearish on the street. Your price target is about half what the street's looking for. Is that just based on a slowdown of sales, Chinese competition, or is there something else in there? You know what? We see as Tesla, Tesla is fundamentally overvalued, egregiously overvalued. They don't really have anything that Toyota doesn't. Why would they say? Fuck's sake, dude. It took, what, like two seconds? <laughs> That's what she said. And he's already come out claiming that Tesla doesn't have anything that Toyota doesn't already have. I mean, this is so outrageous. There's no way he believes this. He just can't, possibly. Why does he say such things? Does anyone know? Like, what's the deal with this dude? Why does he say this? I mean, is Toyota producing their own batteries? Are they getting into lithium mining? Do they have profitable EVs at scale? No. Are they even selling any EVs in meaningful volumes? No. Do they even have any dedicated EV platforms versus trying to make EVs on ICE platforms? Does Toyota have their own supercharging network? Is Toyota working on FSD? Do they have their own battery energy storage products? Giga casting, steer by wire? They're working on human. I just can't take this guy seriously. It traded such a massive premium. You know, you look at a company that's traded like a growth company, but there is no growth here in the first quarter. We're going to see continued price cuts. You know, over the course of this year, I think you know this uh, little price price uh, increase for April first is a little bit of gaming, trying to juice the numbers in what's going to be a very weak quarter. And uh, I think consumers out there expect price cuts later on this year. So you're going to see, you're going to see, you know, more negative momentum in the stock. And that's, that's the most important thing. Retail props this up. And I think retail is going to keep coming out and drive the stock down. All right. So you are very bearish. We're going to go to the complete other side. Tom, you're pretty bullish. Your price target's about 50 percent higher than the street. So you believe that people may be overblowing the growth concerns, even with China down quarter over quarter. Europe also down quarter over quarter. We don't talk often about that story. But you say the lofty valuation of Tesla, 60 times forward earnings, that has nothing to do with EVs in your mind. Yeah, that's right. And I actually agree with what, uh, what your speaker was saying just now with what's happening in the quarter. I think everybody knew Q1 was going to be weak. There was a big pull forward of demand into Q4 uh, because of the IRA expiry. There was also the Red Sea impact. Right, let's go to stop here. And the reason is this price target. This, ladies and gentlemen, is credible. Why? It's clearly come out the end of a fucking valuation model. Why? Because it's not ending in zero, zero. It's not a nice, clean, round number. This is how you know somebody has a serious price target that's an output from a valuation model. 
instead of sticking their fucking finger into the air, licking it, and figuring out which way the wind is blowing. Do not trust anyone who has a price target on Tesla stock, an analyst, with a nice round fucking number. It's absurd. Don't round your fucking price target. Don't make it up. Let it be an output directly of the valuation model. This is really important. You cannot credibly trust anyone with a price target. That's a nice, neat number. Unless, of course, you go give benefit of the doubt. Maybe there's a 1 in 50, 1 in 100 chance that it happened to be 300 exactly, or it happened to be 250 exactly. Statistically improbable. This is actually an extremely positive signal that somebody actually has a model behind their price target, as opposed to just making it up. There's absolutely no excuse, by the way, because I'm sort of some analysts going, oh, Steve, I just, I just round mine up a few dollars to the next. Fuck you. Why would you do that? Why would you round your price target? It doesn't make any sense because now you're being disingenuous. It's not actually what your valuation model produced, is it? No, you idiot. We need to see more of this. I've got to give credit to Tom here. I love it. It's so rare, by the way. If you're curious, go look at some price targets now from analysts on Wall Street. Almost every single one of these wankers has made it up or rounded it instead of conveying the actual truth, the actual output from the actual valuation model. Rant over. On Europe in February this year, we've known that things were slowing down. Model 3, Model Y are getting saturated. The newer model isn't coming until 2025. This is a company you need to look at in tectonic terms. And in any event, this is not Toyota. It's not a car business. It's an autonomy business. And it's an energy storage business. I'd love to hear what your speaker thinks of the valuation of energy storage going from 100 gigawatt hours to 2 terawatt hours, a 20-fold increase. Tesla has 15% market share of that business. Bro, Tom has just actually murdered Craig in real time. Mr. Erwinkle, I think that's his name, Craig Erwinkle, who in this very discussion claimed that Toyota doesn't have anything that Tesla doesn't have and vice versa. They have the same shit, right? They're the same thing. Therefore, Tesla's egregiously overvalued. That was his line of reasoning. Tom has just absolutely fucking eviscerated him. Uh, I'd like to know what Craig thinks about the energy business that Toyota obviously doesn't have. Here's the growth on it. Here's Tesla's market share. Here are some numbers. I think what Tom has just suggested here is that Craig is not credible and cannot be taken seriously because he says things that just are absurd. I'm all for this. I love it. Tom's throwing down the fucking gauntlet here. Of course, if Craig even does respond to this, it's going to be deflection. Or he's going to say, it's so, the energy business is so small, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't even move the needle. Uh. I really look forward to hearing what Craig has to say. And those margins are actually better than the auto business. I think that'll be worth more for Tesla than its car business. We haven't even talked about autonomy. Giving FSD for free for a month could be really big to catalyze growth here. Okay. And get volumes reignited for Q2. All right, so listen, you're throwing down the gauntlet. That's what we want here, Tom. We appreciate that. So, Craig, I'm going to come over to you about the, the, the storage question first, and we'll get back to full self-driving. What is your answer about uh, the fact that he's basing the valuation, again, on uh, autonomy and also storage? So autonomy, robotics, and storage are the three, the three subjects that people care about most. Um, I'm the only analyst on the sell side, only analyst on the street that actually worked in the battery industry, worked in the storage industry. I'll tell you, margins there are razor thin. I work with a number of companies that are Okay, so notice already, rather than discussing Tesla's energy margins, he's instead talking about an industry that he claims he previously worked in having razor-thin margins. That doesn't matter, Craig. What about Tesla's energy margins? The deflection is strong with this one. They're very active there. You know, a couple of years ago, you saw the exit of NEC, which dominated that market. You know, there's a lot of frothy bullishness. Um, we have to be careful, careful with expectations. There's some good companies out there. Tesla is one of them. But, you know, you, you don't get to, you know, $600 billion valuation on storage. That's just not rational. Okay. So robotics, Boston Dynamics is the winner. Now, this is interesting. Craig has tacitly admitted that Tesla has things that Toyota doesn't have. He's talking about their energy business, but then trying to downplay. Well, you, you don't, that doesn't get you to their current valuation. You need, but Craig, I thought you said that Tesla doesn't have anything that Toyota doesn't already have. So why are you even talking about Tesla's energy business? Again, this guy does not believe what he says, obviously. The question is why? Why does he say this stuff? What's his motivation, his incentive? You know, Hyundai bought that for $1.1 billion from SoftBank. You know, maybe it's worth 10 today. It's not worth 600 You know, and this whole AI thing, FSD, you know, if you're going to do level four, it's going to consume more electricity, more electrons to support the compute of that level four uh, autonomy than the drivetrain. That's a non-starter. So, you know, I... What the... He's tacitly acknowledging Tesla's pursuing autonomy. And then his outrageous claim is that the compute required to drive autonomously will exceed the energy requirements to actually propel the vehicle. 
<laughs> oh my god, dude. He's grasping at straws here, but again, it's clear evidence that Craig doesn't believe what he says. Because if he believed what he says, he would have said, Tesla, there is no autonomy. There is no energy business. And now he's just trying to downplay them or <laughs> coming up with these absurd scenarios. I look at this and I say there's some fundamental flaws in the bull thesis. And, uh, you know, it's egregiously overvalued. All right. So, Tom, I think he answered a couple of your points. He also worked in the battery industry. But I want to come back to you, Tom. Um, I know you're very bullish, but when it comes to full self-driving, haven't we seen a lot of difficulties when it comes to this? We've seen some other companies get out of that space just because of the trouble executing. Yeah, that's right. And I just really quickly just want to say energy storage, Tesla's actually already making more profit on that business than they are on their car business. I actually went to the Lathrop facility a few weeks ago and saw it firsthand. Also met with utilities who, who suggest the growth there. Um, on FSD, you're right. It's really difficult to do this. That's why a lot of companies are pulling out of it. FSD, I just want to correct also, your speaker, it's not level four, right? It's level two plus. It's 80% of your driving on highways. Tesla's the only one that does autom automated lane changing. It does exits for you. I think a lot of the concerns have been these accidents that you see happening on small roads. That's when you and I can just take the car over. But the 80% of the driving that happens on highways, I'm telling you, this product is amazing. You guys need to try it. It is simply amazing. No other really automaker has something on the road with this many miles. And now they're going to get to try it. I do think the pricing is too high. Once they drop the pricing, the tax rate goes up. You could get an autonomy multiple on that. So, a so just quickly on FSD, based on its current capabilities, no question, price is too high. But based on what it will be able to do in the future, it's a steal. And this is an important distinction. This has two options. They can lower the price of FSD now, and then as its capabilities increase, continue to raise the price. Or they can allow people to purchase it outright today for a bargain and then as the capabilities increase, e.g. Tesla can legally operate robotaxis in certain regions, then all regions in the US and then globally, they can massively ratchet up the price. I don't think people are really grasping this. 12,000 US dollars is a fuck ton today, but not when the vehicle can go out and act as a robotaxi and make two or three times what it costs you to buy the software to do that in its first fucking year while you're asleep at work, banging your wife or whatever. The take rates on FSD at the moment are very low because it still assists you rather than doing the driving for you. You can't fall asleep in the back of the vehicle. It can't go out and pick people up and drop them off and earn you an income passively yet. But that will change. And then the economics change enormously. The value of the product, forget the price, the value of what it offers is going to go through the roof in the simplest possible terms. If you could spend $12,000 on something that in year one makes you $36,000, it's the no-brainer of no-brainers. But today, it can't make you a single dollar. So we're going to see a huge flip in that value proposition as capabilities increase. And Tesla gets approval for the first robot taxis, probably in California, and then quickly everywhere else throughout the United States and beyond. Level two plus offering, not level four just yet. All right, we're getting a little bit in the weeds with level two plus, level four, but you're saying it's still in the early stages of full self-driving. I think that's the real point that you're trying to make. Uh, before I let you guys go, um, sometimes this stock, it trades on the delivery numbers. So Tom, first you, uh, what's your expectations for deliveries? Do you think that Tesla meets those estimates or not? Yeah, I mean, I just cut my estimates uh, yesterday, actually. I'm at 446. Uh, so yeah, it could even come in below. So I, I definitely think it could, estimates are I think at 461 as of yesterday. So right. it could probably miss, but I think the buy side is already there. But it, but it doesn't change your bull case. Craig, giving you the last no. answer, then we got to get you going. You know, some, something like 430, 440, that's, that's where I think the numbers come in. It all comes down to this tap up on prices in the U.S. Right. Does it actually pull forward much? If they beat though, does that change your, your rating, your price target? Does it change your view at all? It doesn't, doesn't change anything fundamentally. It don't want to spoil the ending here, but Nothing Tesla ever does is going to change Craig's comments and opinions, which are clearly not his. In the distant future, if Craig is still covering Tesla, when their fleet exceeds 100 million vehicles and they're printing money, software margins through the roof, first it's going to be the competition is coming for autonomy, I guess, and then for humanoid robots, and he'll continue to claim that the company is egregiously overvalued. You can count on it. Personally, I think that Craig's opinion is egregiously overvalued. And I still, does anyone have any idea why he says this stuff? Like, what's the, what's the deal? I'm serious. Does anyone have any, like, inside information? Because I cannot accept that he actually believes what he says. It appears he's attempting to paint a dishonest, false, and deceptive bearish narrative on Tesla for some reason. By saying things that just run counter to reality. So what's this guy's deal? Want more content? Early access? 
bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. And now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.